up my crafty friends my name is Carrie and welcome back to my channel I'm so excited you're joining me for another video today because my girl Keisha and I are hosting another open invite collaboration and this one is nailed it or failed it so we have totally opened up our playlist and we've invited y'all to join us on this open collaboration now if you missed the invite I'll be sure to put the card up above and yeah we would love to have you join us we're gonna keep the playlist open so it's not too late so if you just happen to decide hey you want to participate by all means watch that invite video and join us because we would love to have you now my inspiration piece did come from Wayfair it's like 50 bucks for this set of two iron planters and wait until you see how I do these use and some foam board from the Dollar Tree, as well as some wooden beads that I picked up from Amazon. Don't forget to watch the video in its entirety and let me know down in the comments below whether I nailed it or failed it. If you enjoy this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up because that would mean the world to me. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, consider hitting that subscribe button down below and turning on all those notifications. So if I go live on YouTube or when I upload a new video, you're gonna be one of the first ones to be notified of that. So that's enough talking y'all, let's start DIY. Okay, so let's take a look at what we're gonna use for this first project. So I've got a piece of foam core here. This is Dollar Tree foam core. I've actually used it for a couple of other projects. So it is technically a scrap piece. I'm also gonna use a ruler or a straight edge. I'm gonna use some 220 and 320 grit sandpaper. I'm gonna use my Surebonder hot glue gun with my clear sticks. And I'm also gonna need a super sharp X-Acto knife. You can use um, a hot knife too if you've got one, but if not, either a box cutter that is super sharp or an X-Acto knife would work. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is to decide exactly how big I want my little piece to be. So I've decided that I want my piece to be roughly six inches. I'm gonna start off with the raw edge of my foam board and I'm gonna mark six inches. I'm also going to mark the center, which is three inches. So now I'm going to find the center, and I'm going to come down and mark 10 inches. Now you can decide ever how big or small you want yours to be, but I like the size of this one. It's a great size. So now I'm going to come back over to my starting edge and I'm going to find my center and make my first line. Now I'm going to come over and find my second edge and I'm going to make my other line. So now we've got ourselves a triangle. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out my first triangle and then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to cut my second triangle. You can technically go ahead and start cutting, start drawing out all of them if you want to, but I like to make sure that they're exact, so I like to use the pattern that I've got. But it's totally up to you. So now I've got my two triangles. So now I want to take my glue gun and the long sides of my triangles I'm going to glue together. Now you can see my lines are not perfectly straight and that's totally okay. That's where our sandpaper is going to come in. If you've seen me work with foam core before, you know that it is totally possible to sand foam core. So I'm just going to place a bead of hot glue right on the edge 
and I'm going to glue the long sides together. And it's all right if you get some glue right on your edge. That is not going to matter. The important thing is just to make sure that they're lined up. And it's all right if you've got some spillage of your hot glue. That's not going to matter either. Okay, so now I'm going to flip it over and I am going to run a bead of glue just along the center for reinforcement. We'll give this just one second to cool off. And then I'm going to take my piece and I'm going to use it as my template for my back piece. Now, I'm sure if you're into geometry and that sort of thing, I'm sure there's some kind of formula that you can use, but I'll be totally honest, I do not enjoy math, so this way is the easiest for me. But if math is your thing, then by all means, use that formula if there is one. This is just the easiest thing for me. Now I am gonna take my ruler just to make sure my line is straight. But now I've at least got my shape right. Now we'll cut this piece. These are my pieces all cut out, so I'm going to set this poster board to the side. Now, you can go ahead and just glue your pieces of uh, foam cord together, but I kind of want this to set a little bit smoother. So now I'm just going to bevel this edge just a little bit so that I have more surface to glue to. Just be super careful. You don't want to cut the front side of your poster board. You just want to cut through. You don't want to cut this side. You just want to cut on the inside. And you can totally just glue it straight onto here, but doing it this way is just going to give us a little more surface area. Just be super careful if you don't cut your fingers. I did not cut the front side at all. It was just that back side. Now, if you don't own one of these, I will admit this has been a total lifesaver for me because I can just vacuum up all these little things. You never have seen a cuter vacuum in your life. If you want to check out this little ladybug vacuum, I'll put a link to that down below in the description box. Okay, so now I'm going to take my hot glue. Now make sure when you glue this that you are gluing on the correct side. We're going to be gluing on the longer side, not our short side, just on the longer sides. See how much nicer your foam core fits together when you bevel that edge? I just think it helps to make your life a little bit easier, especially with the sanding. 
Okay. Now I'll take my glue gun and go down the edge ever so slightly and just make sure that all of our gaps are filled in. You can take a rubber spatula or I've got this cute little Sherbonder glue mat and smooth it out. Make sure that your glue is dry before you let go with that because you don't want any of your glue, you don't want your piece coming apart. So I did not do that so you can see. I had to go back in with a little more hot glue and just fill in that gap. So just hold it until it cools off. See that our planter is taking shape. Now you can see I am not being neat at all. It is sort of messy looking, but wait until you see the difference that a little sanding makes. So I'm going to start off with my 220 grit sandpaper first, and then I'll move up to my 320. And I'm just going to take it and sand down all of these rough edges. Okay, I think I've got all of my edges sanded smooth. clean up my mess here. Okay, now it's time to have a little fun. Now, you can go a couple of different ways with this planter. It can totally be a modern planter by leaving it, painting it a pretty white color, maybe adding in some gold accents, or you can choose to go a little more farmhouse rustic and go with more of a galvanized look. It would also be pretty painted black. I mean, let your imagination go wild and paint it whatever matches your color scheme. I decided that I'm gonna paint mine to look galvanized. So to make that happen, I'm gonna be using Waverly chalk paint in the color Elephant and also silver lining. I'm also gonna use one of my little stubby paint brushes and I've done this tutorial several times and if you missed that, I'll put a link to that above in the cards. So I'm gonna start off with the color Elephant. And I'm just gonna paint the whole thing Elephant. I'm also gonna paint the top edge. You don't have to worry about painting the inside because once you get your plants all in there, it's not even gonna show. Now I'm going to take some of my silver lining. I'm just going to pour it right onto my paper. I don't need a lot of this. I'm 
going to do sort of a dry brush technique. I'll put some on. We're going to be taking most all of this off. I do have another technique that I like to use for galvanized, and if you miss that tutorial, I'll put a link to that in the cards above. It's a completely different look than this. It looks way more like galvanized than this one. This one I just want to sort of to highlight and give some rustic edge to it. Our galvanization would not be complete without a little bit of rust. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this craft mark paint in brown and just add a tiny bit of rust. And I love the way this seam looks here in the front because it totally looks like that's your welded seam for your galvanized planter. Now this by itself looks way cool. Once you get your succulents and everything in here, it's going to look awesome. If you do plan on using the planter just like this, make sure that you drill a little hole with your X-Acto knife so you have something to hang it by. I, on the other hand, am going to take it one step further and I'm going to make myself something to hang it by. So to make my hanger, I'm going to use a shower curtain ring that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. I've also got some jute twine from the Dollar Tree and these beads I picked up from Amazon and I think they came in like four or five different assorted sizes and I'll put a link to those down below if you want to check those out. So while I've got my paint already out, I'm going to go ahead and paint my shower curtain ring to match my planter. So, like I said, I painted my ring to match my planter. Same thing. Wash my brush out before I forget. And now I'm just going to pull off some of my jute twine. I don't know exactly how long I want it to be, but I'm going to cut it roughly 36 inches. I'm just gonna fold it in half, have the center, and just put it straight through my shower curtain ring. Just like that and it fits right in the middle. So now I'm just going to layer my beads on until I get the length that I'm happy with and then I'll measure it. laid out just enough. Okay, so let's see. And I want a little bit of my jute cord to hang down. So I'm not going to take it 
all the way to the very top. I do want a little bit of it to hang down just because I think that looks cool. And I think I'm loving the size of this. So to make sure that my beads don't go anywhere, I am going to tie a couple of knots in just the very end. just clip off our little threaders here and now we've got our hanger all finished so I'm just going to use my hot glue and attach my hangers right on the inside edge I just glued it right into the edge. And now we'll do the same thing for this side. And just to be on the safe side, I'll put a little more glue on top. Our finished planter is not going to be heavy, so I'm not really worried about that. And I'm going to be using fake succulents, so again, that's going to be super light as well. Okay, y'all, look how adorable this is. Isn't that precious? I love it so much. Now, if you don't think you're gonna fill up your planter with your succulents, then by all means, go ahead and paint the inside. But I know I'm gonna have my pool. There it is. Now, when I made this, I had every intention of putting succulents in it, but I will admit, I forgot that I had picked up this lamb's ear from Walmart, and I think I'm going to see what the lamb's ear looks like in there. I love lamb's ear. It's just so farmhousey and pretty. I think the lamb's ear might be a winner. What do y'all think? Lamb's ear or succulents? Let me hang it on my wall and see which one looks better. That does it for today's video, y'all. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up because that would mean the world to me. And if you think I nailed this video, let me know down in the comments below. Or if you think I failed it, let me know that too because I can totally take it. I have no problems going back to the drawing board and trying something else if you think I did not nail it. Don't forget to watch everybody that is linked in the playlist and all you've got to do is hit loop on that playlist and you don't have to go to a bunch of different channels. You just hit loop and you can watch everybody that is joining us on this open collab. And like I said before, it is not too late for you to join us as well. We would love to have you. So that does it y'all. Until next time, happy DIYing y'all.